Hey guys, we're back. Uh, we have our 9560R hooked up to the uh, 2720. Uh, working on our primary tillage. I'll uh, bring up our soil mod HUD here and um, see what our nutrient index is. Uh, this field, uh, field 18, yielded uh, 269 bushel an acre. Uh, 200 and uh, basically 270 bushel an acre uh, was uh, 13,417.6 bushel over 49.84 acres. Um, so did really well. We have our grain cart hired off, a hired worker. Uh, we have our 9560R hired off. Combines, course play. So um, this uh, field will be right about ideal once uh, soil mod updates uh, because of this residue and then uh, we'll be able to put down some MPK with our uh, Kuhn Kraus. So um, I didn't really want to increase the speed of this ripper. I liked where it was, um, right around the uh, six to eight mile an hour range where it really should be. But uh, I guess people didn't really like that. You know, everyone in farm sim wants to go fast, fast, fast. So um, I reduced the the, the pull for. Uh, uh, reduce the pull force, um, increase the speed to 12, max speed to 12, and uh, um, added flex to the wheels and the uh, individual wings, and um, I think it works pretty good. Uh, I really like it better than the old one. Uh, I did nothing to the model. All I did was added flex. And then change some things in the XML. I uh, redid the disc and uh, frame dirty texture spec map, but that's about it. So then this one's ready to go. For whatever reason. Doesn't like Thank you. 
so not a whole lot going on on the farm. I mean, there's a lot going on, but this guy's just killing it with the ripper. Uh, this ripper. Gotta love that clip distance. So our combine is starting to get a little dirty, corn headers starting to get a little dirty. Um, I think what I'll do is um, I really want to um, get a sprayer but I'm not sure if I want to buy the Pantera or if I want to wait to to make one or someone else makes one I don't know I don't think it'd be hard to make a John Deere uh, R4045. You can just use the uh, John Deere cabs that are already out, 7R hoods. Use wheels. Um, use the uh, mud flaps. So really the only thing would be like a frame and a tank and booms. So I think a good trick would be tool of vertical offset, move it back. See if that takes inside corners any better. our grain cart. I'm going to go unload the uh, combine down there. And this guy's going to do a straight lines. For a second, I actually low now while recording. I don't know 
if that's just because I have one, two, three, four things on course play. But it says my GPU is at seventy three percent. be the fact that I'm recording and running all this stuff on course play plus my increased clip distance but it says in my indicator there in the top left it's 66 73 percent of my GPU so oh I'm uploading a video right now on YouTube that's why That's why my FPS is low. I was gonna say, that's why Jake legs whenever I upload stuff. It's so weird when... When you upload or when you're running the internet, legs the other player, or even if... But even like his indicator delay is his delay on the screen isn't low. So. so we'll go back, watch our John Deere kill it. So with this we can put down our stock rollers, have our tanks up, stock rollers down. So I was thinking of turning the uh, MT, the, the Cat Challenger, into our articulating tractor because I could just uh, um, import. There's already a, like an MT900 or something like that. Like that. I could just import the uh, rear end and the front fenders and put my hood and cab and engine on it and uh, use like these wheels. You know, just do something quick. Nothing official, but it'd be nice to get a articulating and then uh, change up the cab a little bit because it's the cab on the articulating one's more flat. So So, although this game only has, like, two terrains, well, it really has three, it has plowed, cultivated, and planted, but this, there's a lot of European people that play this game that don't really understand American tillage equipment. They think this is a, like, just a cultivator, but this is a primary tillage machine. Basically, all the discs do is they um, as you can see the particle animations is it uh, just flips the soil 
basically um, but the whole point is to chop you're supposed to run your corn at a slight angle offset to your rows but it's supposed to chop up your corn stalks chop up all the residue uh, chop up those root balls and it just basically slices and dices and then kind of like agitates aerates gets air in there uh, for all those uh, bacterium and all those earthworms all those uh, facultative anaerobes and anaerobic or aerobic bacteria they love that stuff and gets that new fresh nutrients basically that food that they love and then they'll uh, degrade that down into the basic elements your nitrogen and uh, potassium and phosphorus and um, calcium and all the nutrients goes into the soil but this that's basically all the discs do and then the uh, rippers bake up uh, they uh, rips you know it's about 50 horsepower per shank and I think there's either 10 or 11 shanks on this so that's you know over 500 horsepower required to run this tool um, in real life and it'd only be able to pull at about six miles an hour you know this tractor is double what it would be going in real life and the whole point behind the shanks is to rip up um, your compaction your man-made compaction layer is not deep enough to go to the natural compaction that would be your deep uh, deep uh, V rippers, deep vertical tillage like 9, 9, uh, 915V or the 2100 is itself is a medium deep vertical tillage you know it's not really made to be pulled behind high horsepower equipment it's mostly uh, for your 8R series, your 8360R, 8370R that's about as big as you want to put on the back front of the 2100 um, just because it's not built for high speed deep rip, uh, vertical rippage um, but that's the whole point behind this and then you, you, you'd have massive like softball or larger size clumps after this if you just went disc ripper disc and so these roller baskets all they do is basically chop slice chop the big chunks into small chunks that's all it does so you're just basically cutting up all your residue all your um, root balls uh, your stocks uh, ripping up your compaction layer um, and uh, just trying to size up that residue get it agitated aerated for the bacteria to do their job so when you come in the spring you um, just have your field cultivator for your seabed prep and uh, basically it takes all the big chunks that were now diced into smaller chunks and it just makes a nice loafy uh, loamy uh, seed bed for your planter to come uh, for uh, nice germination and when you with these shanks they uh, these rippers in the middle they uh, really slice through that compaction layer to uh, help with um, water water absorption um, and really uh, for root germination as well because if you know anything like sand water will seep right through sand it won't stay where clay clay is basically cement water won't absorb so you want a soil that's in between that uh, it can absorb water from runoff so it's you know absorbs all that moisture doesn't run off for erosion and then um, you don't want it completely sandy so you actually retain that water so that's why a lot of farmers they do um, primary tillage they use this or like a, a case IH like 875 or something like that it's like the equivalent of the 2720 it's just not as big or they'll use like a uh, a dominator a coon cross dominator um, there's some that basically skip the rippage um, they don't run the deep shanks they basically use a um, well coon cross makes it it's called an accelerator it's like a high speed broad disc that its sole purpose is to chop up and size the residue and then it pretty much negates any kind of compaction layer that's not the purpose of the tool you'd have to go back and basically rip your field if you wanted to rip up your compaction um, so that you can use a little bit smaller tractor on that tool or you can just go to a wider wingspan wider working width um, increase your speed but that just chops up uh, your, your residue and it's kind of 
is kind of uh, you can pretty much plant right after that um, just because you're not really digging up any kind of massive chunks during the process of ripping um, so moral of the story is you cannot plant I don't care what kind of planter you have you really can't plant uh, after this because you're you'd have such difference in your terrain you know your seed placement would be terrible I um, mean your your row units would be bouncing all over the place even in those new John Deere high-speed planters like there's no way you'd be able to keep your 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 row box from your row unit from bouncing all over the place so. unless you pretty much made it completely rigid So that's the story behind this, um, and why it's made. It's it would I built it uh, once um, soil mod came out. It's just a uh, big plow. I'm gonna try to make these real roller baskets additional three components. So um, it flat uh, and then turn the roller baskets into wheels. So it follows the train so it doesn't get buried like that. That really bothers me. Um, yeah, so far our stock rollers are working well. I'm going to have to hop in the tractor once it gets up to these slurry pits, liquid manure, and because uh, it gets kind of different here. So we have our soybean. Our, uh, we're at about 66% in our tank. This will be good. We'll be able to probably fill our grain cart. Request a driver. So I think I've got to bump the clip distance up to 300 again because I like 200 but 300 is a lot better. You can see that almost the entire field here kind of kind of quits halfway where 300 you get over to the other side of that kind of bubble bubble where you, you stop seeing and it really it really didn't impact my GPU much. You can see I'm running you know all this equipment and it's at my GPU is at 77%, 75%. My frames per second is low because I'm uploading a video to YouTube right now, the, the last one I just recorded. And um, so I know nothing about this. Uh, this Topcon GPS system. It really should have been a Green Star since I have Green Star on all of my equipment, so that means I'm basically paying for two GPS systems. Um, but I really like the look of it. It looks cool. I mean, I have a little cord and plug and everything uh, modeled on there. And, but. Uh, Oh, no, it's cool. I, I plan on making a uh, a row gator RG1300 to go with this, and most likely an articulating uh, MT900, and then probably eventually like a, a 700 series, just to get some nice cats. But that's probably like you know two three months worth of work at least. once I find the motivation to do it. Right now I'm pretty happy and content. Um, with the, the mods on the farm, but one thing is we really need a self-propelled uh, self-propelled sprayer. So we're going to be able to fill, fill this Kinsey all the way up. There we 
go, 100%. How's this guy doing? This guy is doing a great job. I love this plow texture. It's so great. So I think I'm going to shut the operation down. Hopefully we're done by before uh, midnight. And then uh, just pick up on tomorrow. Or in this game time, you know, fast forward till tomorrow. So uh, basically our headlands of this field need a little bit of uh, fertilizer before. So I think since I already have This is already loaded. I'm just going to go and spray those headlands. Because the next grow stage will be uh, putting uh, down more of this MPK with our anhydrous. exactly where
this is a little high here. This is low. So you can tell by the colors where it's high and low. For the most part this field is pretty good except on the headlands for whatever reason it's pretty low. This is good. This is bad. That's good.
I think I'll end the video here for you guys. Just a little bit more uh, course play footage and some soil mod. Thanks for watching.